Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today is the long-awaited sequel to the iMac G3 restoration video, where I'm going to be installing a new set, a brand new set of 512... a brand new set of 1 gigabyte of RAM, and I'm going to be installing the latest version of Mac OS X, that being 10.4.11 Tiger, onto this machine. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, gonna unplug the keyboard and stuff, and this is the RAM door. My two 64 megabyte sticks of PC100 RAM. You can still buy this stuff new from OWC, that's pretty much the only place that's still selling these things. But here's the first piece, and here is the second piece. Each 64 megabytes and actually mismatched, so that's kind of weird. And I'm going to go ahead and take out the RAM from here, sort of non destructively. Here we go. There is RAM. That was not very non destructive at all, but here's RAM. And that's our first 512 megs. And this is our second 512 megs. This should work in this computer. I looked it up and 1 gig of RAM is officially supported. Or not officially supported, but um, is known to work in these computers. But 1 gig of RAM, of course, like didn't exist back then. I'm going to be installing the RAM into the slots here. And the RAM should be installed now. That was like the quickest RAM upgrade that I've done in a while. I mean, embarrassingly, the last time I tried to upgrade RAM in a computer, I tried to shove DDR2 into a computer that used DDR1. So that was uh, embarrassing. And I can use a lightning cable to tighten this back up. Okay, it's plugged in. Okay! I hear, I heard the startup chime. And it should boot from the hard drive now. I have a Happy Mac. Alright, um... Sent to about this Mac. Alright, why is it only detecting 512 megs of RAM? Um, it should detect the full RAM, but before I try to reseat one of the modules... Let's go to Applications. Utilities. Apple System Profiler. Yeah, that makes sense. I want to see, alright, it's 400 megahertz PowerPC G3. I think that's the slowest. I'm going to shut down the system. Come on. Well, oh, shutdown doesn't pop up a box in this version. I didn't know that. Alright, there's the RAM door. Um, yeah, I think that there are some iMac G3s that were picky about RAM. There goes one of my studio lights again. Everything seems to be seated just fine, but one thing I'm actually going to try is I'm going to remove one of the sticks and then put 64 megs in there so that um, I have 576 megs of RAM because um, that's a little bit better than 512. I'm sure the part isn't faulty. I'm sure this is just the computer being fussy about RAM. And hopefully it even detects that there is RAM in the machine now. Okay. Scary noises, and it's booting. All right, about this Mac, 576 megs. I think that's all I'm going to get running in this computer for now. I might try the other RAM again, but for now, 576 megs of RAM is fine. So off camera, I've gotten myself a FireWire card uh, that I installed into my PC. It's a PCIe card, and I have hooked it up with my computer so now, I should be able to, if I plug in this FireWire cable to the computer's internal FireWire port, I should be able to put this machine into target disk mode and then put anything I want onto the drive. So let's turn on the computer. Hold down T. Alright, we got the FireWire logo all over the place, so that means FireWire target disk mode is working. So now I just need to... 
uh, access it on my computer and see if it works. All right, we are on the Linux box and the hard drive is detected on the computer. So that's pretty nice. So what I want to do is head into Chrome. Go to macintoshgarden.org. Search for, um, all right, it's just down here, Mac OS 10 for PPC. And I'm going to download Tiger 10.4.6, this one right here. And this should be, yeah, it says one hour left. I'm not going to wait that long. I'm going to try the mirror. I have to do this for the mirror. Yeah, 20 minutes left, 9 minutes left, 7 minutes left. Yeah, this one's going to be a lot faster to get downloaded onto the computer from the mirror. So I'm going to come back once this download is complete. I'm going to set it up in QEMU. All right, the image has finished downloading, so I'm going to go ahead and open this up here. We can see that it's 2.5 gigabytes in size. All right, so it's in the emulators folder now. So now I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal window. Oop, I just, I don't want to do that. Open up a terminal window, and then I'm going to do, first I'm going to go to the disks app, and here's the, the hard drive. I'm going to go ahead and unmount this partition. Look at all these partitions. A bunch of Apple driver partitions. I'm not sure how these work because they, they have unknown contents and stuff. I'm not sure if macOS can even mount them. And I'm not sure if macOS 10 Tiger even like uses them. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type in sudo qemu system ppc dash l pc bios dash boot d dash m mac no, I don't need that. I need this. Dash m 512 dash hda slash dev slash sdc not a to make sure yeah this is dev sdc because I don't want to accidentally wipe my internal hard drive or my six terabyte backup drive dash cd rom tiger 4.6.dmg put in my password all right, now it's booting from the Tiger Disk. We have the Apple logo. So this is going to take a little bit because it's QEMU, and QEMU does not take a short amount of time to boot into operating systems, but uh, hopefully it works and stuff. If you're wondering, the iMac's just sitting at the FireWire logo waiting for... Um, oh, it didn't take that long at all. I was expecting it to take longer. I think in older versions of QEMU, it took like a ridiculous amount of time. So I'm going to go ahead and use English as the main language. Preparing installation. All right, we are in the Mac OS X installer. My mouse sensitivity is way too high. Let's go to Disk Utility to see if the disk shows up and all that. And there it is. So now I'm going to wipe it. 128 gig QEMU hard disk. I call this. This computer was not expensive. Because the RAM did cost like a lot more than I've spent on this computer so far. But let's go ahead and erase the drive, anyways. Let's quit disk utility. Continue. Continue, agree, even though I'm probably breaking every single thing on here. And then I'm going to go to options. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Install Mac OS X. Continue, customize. This is what I want. I want X11. I don't want language translations. And I don't want additional fonts. And I don't want printer drivers. So that's like half the space gone. That's more than half um, just like saved by doing that. So let's click install. I'm going to skip this because it's a DMG file. All right, it claims to only be three minutes, but judging by the speed of hard drives, it's not going to be that fast, and QEMU is not very fast either. All right, once the installation completes, I'm going to come back, and we'll go from there. All right, the installation appears to have completed, so I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. 
click restart. All right, let's go ahead and uh, reset the machine. And it's booting up again. And we should get the hard drive showing up. I'm just going to hold down option just to make sure. And there's the OS. Now I can't boot into it yet because uh, the startup manager on this computer is horrible. Or on PowerPC in general, to be honest. Alright, now we're booting into Mac OS X. And hopefully it actually boots this time around and doesn't just stay here forever. Okay, it does seem to be booting. Alright, so we seem to be running at 1024 by 768 which means there's going to be a lot of flickering. I'll set the resolution down to 640x480 once we get in the system, but we should get the awesome boot video pretty soon. Hopefully it spins and spins and spins to success. There we go. Let's go. Do 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 Falling into zeros and one Okay, I'm not gonna sing the whole song because there is lyrics, so that's pretty epic. Here does not connect to the internet right now. Uh, let's go ahead and press this. Tag! Okay, I'm not going to do that. Alright. Uh, wow, there's a lot of flickering. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that. Um, my own user account, my name's going to be... This time, I'm just going to go with the simple, uh, the good old, useful distro hopper. I want to do, to meme it up a little bit, distro dropper. 39B. And then I'm going to put in a password. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hopefully I didn't type a tilde there. If I did, it would give me an error, but it isn't. I'm not in Cupertino, but I don't really care right now. Because it says it's 2006. Because I don't have a battery in this machine. And now, we are getting into the system. Let's go to About This Mac. 400 megahertz PowerPC G4, 576 megs of RAM. That's the same specs as it had last time, except now it has 10.4.6. So I'm going to go to Displays and set the resolution. What's, what is going to be the um, refresh rate at uh, 594p? Oh wow, 594p is actually probably the best resolution for this because it's at 96 hertz, and I don't see any strobing lights on the camera whatsoever. This this screen's most optimized for 800 by 600, but uh, oh, actually there is strobing lines. I I just didn't see it in a white background um, for some reason. Yeah, it doesn't. There doesn't seem to be when there's a white background, but there is. When there's a blue background, that's so weird. I don't know what the science behind that is. Probably just my phone focusing in a certain way. All right, let's see. 640 by 480 is at 117 hertz. And that's probably the best one for cameras. That's generally considered the best one for cameras because it's almost double 60 hertz. Uh, only problem, of course, with 640 by 480 is the fact that most applications don't fit properly in this resolution. But I'm going to call that a successful video. We got Mac OS X Tiger installed on this machine. We got some new RAM installed, even though one of the 512 meg sticks didn't work because of the fact this machine's pretty picky about RAM. I could probably get 768 megs working in this machine, but 576 for a 400 megahertz G4, it's going to get bottlenecked by the G4, even at 512 with Tiger. So I would say this is a success. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the future.